So I went into St. John. She took me in. And we waited and we waited and we waited. And the, thing, the bad thing was that I just didn't look very sick, I guess. So finally, finally, they said, well, this, this guy's been sitting there. Got to do something with him. So they took me in. And within a few minutes, they realized I was dying. Uh, we didn't know what the problem was. Uh, we had no idea. And therefore, it calls for exploratory surgery. Exploratory surgery means they cut you open, lay you out on a table, literally. <laughs> Take the in intestines and other areas out. Study them, try to figure out what's wrong. That's what, they, that, that, that's what they proceeded to do to me. Fortunately, I, you know, it's God's will, obviously, that uh, at that moment, on call, was a man who had extremely good surgical talents. Dr. Larson came out and told me, um, this is very tenuous. We don't know if he's going to make it through the night. Stan made it through. Uh, Dr. Larson came out and said, um, we didn't sew him back up together because we don't know how um, ha how he's going to mend or if he's going to mend. The four sons and I were home and said, okay, the next early the next day we're going to call. Who would like to be a leader and go, you know call at the same time and talk to Mandy? And uh, Matthew says, I do. You know, uh, I I want to tell my sister really what's going on. We called Mandy, and just after she said hello, she says, how's my father? How's my father? And I said, why are you asking how your father is? She said, I had a horrible dream last night. She says, something came to me in the dream and said, I'm taking your father. And I said, you cannot have my father. You cannot have my father. In Jesus' name, you cannot have my father. Three times she... Um, pled the blood of Jesus not to take her father. She said, how is he? And then Matthew tuned in and said, Mandy, he's very, very ill, and we just want to tell you. But you don't have to come home. She says, I'm coming home. I really don't remember the pain. Maybe it's because um, they had so much morphine, does amazing things. Um, maybe it's because um, I was experiencing such a powerful um, thing going on inside of me because all of the time that I was in the co in coma or in out of the, out of it, I had the second chapter of the Song of Solomon ringing through my mind like a song. Come away, my beloved, come away, for the winter has passed and the spring has come, and it's time for the singing of the mockingbirds. Come away, my beloved, come away. It was glorious. Now you know I'll never fear death again. There's no reason to fear death. It turned out to be one, it, probably the highlight of my life. Just glorious. I can't explain why. There's no bells, no great symphony, no, you know. But it was just a powerful moment of joy. We did not know at the time. We do now. That is because I have a disease called P. vera, polycythemia vera, which literally means this body is producing too many red corpuscles, and as a result of that, you get clots, and the clot probably then went into the corpus, I entered the uh, ilium, killed it before we knew what had happened, and I was dying because of peritonitis. Now the problem, of course, here is that even if you survive it, you have nothing to uh, digest with. That's why I'm such a skinny runt today. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you're going to have to be fed by intravenous layout during the night, Stan. Well, they didn't even know I was going to live, so let's get back to the, the living part. Um, in the middle of all this, uh, Ruth put out the word. We had people of every denomination, every faith, every group all over the world that we knew praying. I don't know who touched the hem of his garment. I don't know, but maybe it was a corporate touching. Maybe God knew that uh, different people would be touched by this and they have to come after the hem. But it worked. The next day, I was told, Ruth was called in by the doctor and told that she would have to make a decision. They were going in to uh, sew him back together, and Stan said, no, 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 I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want another operation. I said, honey, you're not sewed together <laughs> in your abdomen. It's open. And he said, oh, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and they said, we don't know if he'll make it through the operation or not, because he's so weak. But 
he made it through. And, and I will say that the physicians here at Schweitzer, mm -hmm. so many of them tuned yeah. in and to check on him. It was the body of Christ everywhere, and even our Jewish friends mm -hmm. in Israel uh, went to the wall. Yeah, the Vatican went to the wall because we had friends there. And, uh... He went from extreme intensive care to uh, a room, and then the next week he went and presided at his class at SMS. It was immediate healing. Well, several months later, and one of Scott was in medical school at the mm -hmm. time, um, he thought it would be kind of interesting to take his dad's case study and show it to one of the pathology professors up there. Mm -hmm. And he handed it in, and the um, doctor said, oh, this patient died. This is the, I'm told this is the first case of a person surviving that surgery in St. John's. When you, when you survive something like this, then you realize as a Christian, you have to ask God, now what, how then should I live? What should I do? What are you sir, making me, helping me survive for? What is the purpose of all this? Uh, is it just to prove to others that God heals? Well, maybe, but maybe on the other hand, it, there's an obligation on my part. And so I become very sensitive to what God might want. I felt an obligation to God and to his church in a sense that I had not had before. Because there's no question in my mind I was healed. No question in my mind where it came from. No question in my mind that I've been touched by that power. And so for anybody today that has a problem, a disease, a sickness, and you don't know what to do with, you serve a God a Christ who rose from the dead and can in the same way put that same life-giving quality into our veins and produce health. And so I'm recommending that, that surgeon to all of you. This is our life in the present and our life to come. This is exactly what we can expect.